Ladies and gentlemen, in several previous videos, I have made mention of what we have all come to know as our overlords at the FCCs. And sadly, those videos have caused much wailing and gnashing of teeth for some people, causing many of them to threaten to unsubscribe from my channel, or even worse, click on the thumbs down button if I make any more videos discussing our overlords at the FCCs. So, here we are again. In those previous videos that caused some people so much suffering and pain, I demonstrated multiple times using the FCC's own documents that enforcing the FCC's rules on ham radio, GMRS, even CB radio airwaves is a very low priority to our overlords at the FCCs. Basically, they never do it. Contrary to many very popular fairy tales continuously told by some people, the FCCs is not out looking for ham radio, GMRS, or CB radio violators. And statistically speaking, the FCCs is not issuing large fines or putting anyone in jail. And it is these facts that have led some people to repeatedly over and over claim that all I ever do is bash the brave boys and girls of the FCCs. My friend, listen very closely. If shining the light of truth on the FCC's actions or, to be more precise, their inactions with regard to enforcement of ham radio, GMRS, and CB radio rules. If that is bashing, I guess I'm a be bashing. But the true fact of the matters is that even though the very brave boys and girls at the FCCs do pretty much completely ignore the thousands of daily ham, GMRS, and CB radio violations, those brave boys and girls at the FCCs do actually do other stuff. So in this video, I will very quickly outline just a few of those very important things that the brave boys and girls of the FCCs do do. Things that actually enhance our daily lives every day. First of all, I would just like to point out that as far as I am able to discern from the very confusing information that I can find, the FCC's is not directly funded by your hard-earned tax dollars. Nay, most if not all of the funding of the FCC's comes from collecting fines, licensing and regulatory fees, and from auctioning off our free Xenu given airwaves to the highest bidder. Second of off, and most impotent, here are just a few of the things that the very brave boys and girls at the FCCs actually do spend their time on, and in doing so, help to make America great. Again, as one might expect, the FCC's is responsible for managing and allocating our free Xenu given airwaves. For example, it is the FCC's that ensures that emergency services and first responders are able to communicate, and it is the FCC's that makes sure that your cell phone can actually get through to someone when you call them. The FCC's spews a great deal of their very limited resources, going after telephone spammers, robocallers, and text messaging spammers, something that I am sure we are all very grateful for. However, since many of these spammers are based outside of these United States of America, the FCC's powers are limited and are basically useless, as you may have noticed. The FCC's is our first line of defense, protecting, protecting our very vulnerable children from indecency on broadcast television. 
forcing children of all ages to turn to the interweb for their indecency, and the FCC also polices other very important things related to cable, satellite, and broadcast television, such as regulating the volume levels on commercials and ensuring that there is closed captioning on everything for all of our hearing-deficient friends. Number six. Number six. It is the FCCs that is responsible for things like nationwide broadband adaptation and enforcing rules with Internet service providers. And I think we can all understand and agree just how important that is. Next up on my list, most of you are probably not even aware that the very brave boys and girls at the FCCs are on the front lines in the war against radio pirates. I am not sure why radio pirates are such a big deal to the FCCs, but the FCCs seems to spend a huge amount of time and resources in this war against radio pirates pirates. If you know why the FCCs care so much about these radio pirates, please leave a comment and explain it to me like I'm a five-year-old. Most most of you are probably also not aware the FCCs has a space bureau, which oversees all space-based communications and other very important and very buzzword rich things. And yet another very important aspect of the FCC's is overseeing the transmitter tower safety. That is to say the safety of very large or very high radio transmitting towers. And it appears that the highest priority of the FCC's with regard to policing these large transmitter towers is ensuring that they protect environmental and historic resources, and, of course, protect endangered species. And, oh, by the way, aviation safety is somewhere on that list, so hopefully airplanes don't go crashing into any of those large radio towers. And, of course, the FCC oversees and enforces the most important aspect of our airwaves. Yes, as you might have guessed, EEO enforcement. No, EEO is not some fancy acronym for a new form of radio communications. Nay, EEO is, as most of you soy boys probably already know, equal employment opportunity. And so, of course, one of the most important roles of the FCCs is to issue huge fines to radio and television stations if those radio and television stations do not file their very important EEO forms on time. And those are just a few of the top priorities that the very brave boys and girls of the FCCs are doing to make our lives more safe every single day. And now for the rest of the story, and allow me to be clear, this was not a complete nor a comprehensive list of the very many impotent things that the FCC does. But at least now you have an idea and hopefully a much greater appreciation. Appreciation of what the very brave boys and girls at the FCCs face every day on a daily basis. And hopefully now you fully understand the reason why the FCCs has... No time to bother with petty things that do not make them any money, such as CB ham radio or GMRS radio violators. Good day.